Welcome again on the welcome again on the first day talk. Um, we are really happy that you could join us uh, today. It's the next uh, session. Uh, we try to organize some monthly sessions on Thursdays, um, talking about different water sensitive planning, uh, climate change uh, adaptation, um, and um, um, and we continue. Um, since already a couple of months with this format. Um, I would like to, uh, to invite maybe David and, and uh, Bernd to, to introduce themselves a little bit and give us a short update on the project. Uh, this format is connected to the Polyurban Waters uh, project. So we try to bring forward here our research topics. Um, and later on, I will introduce you the, the agenda for today. Thank you very much, Anja. Um... Bernd, I'd like to take the watch with the word shortly. Um, I would like to say some warm welcome to um, our guests from Cambodia. We have the governor of the province of Karachi, or the uh, vice governor of the province of Karachi with us, Reng Sopir, um, Thank you very much for joining today, Um, And we have a participation from the Directorate of Sanitation from the Public Works Ministry in Indonesia as well. Um, Ibu Erli, thank you very much for joining today. Um, we also have our partners, Kotakita, and we have from Border Cambodia partners here. Um, I see, yeah, uh, a, a mixed group of participants and of course many of our partners from the Poly Urban Waters Network. This was just a short, intro uh, a short welcoming and I hand over to Bernd who would continue with the agenda by introducing um, some short updates on the Poly Urban Water Project. Hello, um, a warm welcome to everybody. Um, uh, today we will talk about climate change adaptation, cli uh, cli uh, climate change uh, in the context of uh, urban de uh, development. As you may know, um, the uh, Poly Urban Waters uh, project that addresses um, um, uh, new approaches on uh, the management of urban waters as well um, has a, a main focus uh, to strengthen resilience of um, the, uh, of cities, yeah, and uh, here climate change adaptation is uh, uh, is a key or a, a main feature um, uh, in the international discussion. Yeah, um, climate change adaptation um, uh, will be as well um, a, a main op um, uh, objective uh, topic in uh, uh, in Glasgow in um, in the COP uh, con uh, conference. Yeah. But um, on, uh, on the international um, level, yeah, um, new uh, uh, um, uh, strategies and new policy instruments are, are being decided. But uh, on the local level, um, climate change is uh, still uh, a key uh, is uh, issue. Um, as we uh, um, in, uh, in Germany this year, uh, we had uh, strong floodings. Yeah, in uh, um, then uh, uh, it was in in, in the U uh, in the US. Uh, currently, it is in Bangkok, respectively, uh, in, in in Thailand. Yeah, and there is uh, there is this uh, mix of um, uh, uh, um, changes of uh, uh, of land uses. There is um, uh, there is. Um, um, the use of uh, of waters uh, of di uh, di different uh, different water resources and uh, uh, climate uh, climate change respect respectively climate climate change impacts. So what we do see from our partner cities and the cities um, in uh, in many cities in Southeast Asia that it's uh, now uh, uh, it becomes a, a strong topic. Yeah, and we are most happy that um, uh, now uh, today. Uh, Christoph Vossela from uh, our city Bremen Overseas Research and Development Organization, yeah, Borda, yeah, and uh, um, uh, uh, Bremen is uh, our ho host city. Um, uh, Christoph, he, he will tell, uh, tell us about uh, the um, um, uh, strategies in Bremen and what is done, yeah. And current, uh, currently, uh, what um, the Poly Urban Waters Project is uh, conducting is our baseline uh, studies uh, in um, in Sleman, uh, Indonesia, uh, uh, 
partner city then in Samnur, Laos, um, uh, and there we uh, we uh, try to detect their yeah, vulnerabilities uh, to, uh, to, uh, to climate change. And later, um, this experience we try as well um, to apply in uh, in Karachi in uh, um, um, in Cambodia. So I wish you a warm uh, welcome um, to, uh, to our session and looking forward to a very interesting presentation and following good discussions. Thank you. Thank you, Bernd. Um, and very welcome to Christoph as well. Thank you that you, you had time to, to join us. Um, I will maybe shortly also introduce Christoph, as Bernd already mentioned, Christoph is a policy advisor for climate change adaptation and the ministry for climate protection, environment, mobility, urban and housing development in the city of Bremen. Um, and uh, Christoph is responsible for the development and implementation of the climate change adaptation strategies. So actually, uh, we hope that he will bring us today to the city of Bremen with some, uh, uh, some examples um, of the projects that uh, were implemented there. Um, and we are looking uh, forward to uh, insights uh, of those projects. Uh, we will be now, we will in, invite you for the 20, about 20 minutes presentation. And after that, we will have uh, time for a longer discussion. Um, so if you have uh, questions, please uh, in the discussion, raise your hand uh, or simply write your question in the chat and we will try with uh, uh, David to moderate it. Um, yeah, so um, Christoph, the, the floor is yours. Um, uh, you can start sharing your screen. Um. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction and also for inviting me uh, to be here and uh, giving you some insights from Bremen, from our strategy, from our Brazilian project. I will try to share my screen. Hopefully that works. I will try to stick with the 15 up to 20 minutes. Um, please uh, let me know if I'm running out of time. Um, just check. Does it work? Can you see the presentation now? Yes, perfect. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. so, sorry to go back. That down. Okay, thanks very much. So what you see here is Bremen and Bremerhaven, uh, two cities, we are one uh, Bundesland, one region and two cities. And um, I'm working for the, as Anja told, for the Ministry of Climate Protection, Environment, Mobility, Urban and Housing Development for the city of Bremen. And um, if you look at that pictures, you already see we have a lot of water around us. So we have the here you can see. Can you see my mouse over? Maybe I switch to that laser pointer. Here you have the river Visa. And oh, that's bad. Sorry for that. Switch that off. Uh, so you have the River Weser. This is uh, uh, the, the city of Bremen. Here, the city center. You have green space uh, around the city center. You have dense areas, uh, dense residential areas, and of course, industrial areas as well. You have here at the right hand side the city of Bremerhaven, which is quite close to the Northern Sea. You can see the Northern Sea here uh, at the end. This is the uh, delta of the River Weser. And um, so if you look at that, um, you already know about what we are talking. If you talk about climate resilience, we're talking about water, we are talking about green space, we are talking about dense areas uh, in the city. And um, um, maybe I, I start with the background and then I come to, to uh, some, some information about our project. So basically we have a strategy uh, for adaptation to climate change, which was um, introduced in 2018, now for four years, we have that strategy. And this helped us a lot to bring in that topic in all different policies of our city. We installed, an, uh, or we, we are still working on that, well, but we, are, we installed a, an organizational structure within the 
city administration, um, a so-called working group of climate resilience, and all members or relevant, uh, let's say, departments are are in there. So, so we meet twice a year. So, which is not very often, I feel, but still, it's something. Um, this was maybe uh, one of the most important result also of the strategy process to have a really um, a working group established where more or less the same people come together, um, talk about the necessity of adaptation, how to build a climate resilient city. Uh, there are members from uh, the economy, economic department, there are members from health, there are members from um, even fireworkers are there, uh, there are members from the uh, green department, from water department, from all, all the relevant departments. And um, for me, it's quite nice to see that as uh, starts to be a kind of knowledge hub for that topic, uh, which seems to be very important because we, at the beginning, when we started to be that process, maybe 10 years ago, um, it was very difficult to find a person who is somehow in charge or who's the, who's the person you can talk about that in, in the other uh, ministries, for example. And um, so with that process, helped us a lot to bring all the ideas and bring all the different perspectives of city development uh, um, in that discussion. And um, if we um, look at it, I mean, we don't talk so much really about climate resilience. We very often talk about like livable city or what is, how, how can we make the city attractive and all these things. So we also sell, of course, uh, our ideas, uh, try to sell it um, and, and, and create a, let's say, step by step, create a better city, let's say. So, and um, on that basis, we have, we have that strategy with a lot of measures, we try to implement them. Um, and we always are facing difficulties in implementation and also um, difficulties um, in on the political level, um, because because the the uh, let's say the impact of measures you will have in ten or twenty or thirty years. So other measures uh, you will have the impact next year maybe. So it's much more attractive, of course, to decide for the short term um, uh, impacts for politicians. But um, of course, we try to show them how, that it's worthwhile to do it in a long in a long way in the long run and that's also more or less the basic of one project which we are implementing um, in Bremen so now we are in the second phase and I've got already some uh, preliminary results let's say all the first results of the first phase of the project which is called climate resilient future city Bremen uh, it's called Brazilian, this is the acronym, and um, it's quite similar to poly urban waters, uh, let's say. Um, it's also a research project with a lot of partners, but they are only, the difference is they are only national partners, so all of them are from uh, German universities or research institutes and city of Bremen, of course. So um, I was talking about showing long-term effects. So. Um, what you can see in all, um, let's say, uh, model areas we are focusing in that project is uh, has all always something to do with economic evaluation or e economy itself. So, showing that it's worthwhile also from the econo economic uh, perspective. So, so we took some um, measures from our adaptation strategies where we say we want to um, have we want to have more cities uh, trees trees in the street we want to have more green roofs and we want to have more uh, permeable um, ceilings um, 
So this is a park that you can see here on the left hand side, a typical city tree you know, or, or a green roof. And, uh, and this is probably the right uh, picture, probably something like a parking, parking slot or something, parking lot, something like that, uh, where you can uh, help the water trickle down. Um, what we did is at the beginning, um, building a scenario, uh, talk to everybody from all departments and talk to, okay, what could we achieve? How many trees could we plant more in a city? You know, that, uh, uh, you know, the trees help uh, in, in the in summer times, they're giving shade, they help uh, in many, in many uh, ways, um, building a resilient city. So we decided um, we want to have a moderate and an ambitious scenario. So the moderate scenario would be 140 trees per year uh, and uh, building 22,000 square meters a year of green roofs um, and to um, have a greening of open stay space in about 60,000 square meters per year. This was just a guess, uh, just to have an idea. Uh, and helped a lot already um, um, to discuss the also the the boundary of what can be changed and how much can we change in a city already. I mean, if you if you create new projects and you create a new uh, residential or industrial area, you can easily implement all these measures and, and uh, foresee these measures, but 90% of the city or 99% of the city is already built. So it's much, much more difficult to change that actually, as you probably uh, know from your city. So, and then uh, we had an economic analysis and I don't want to go into, uh, uh, into details, but if you look at the right hand side, you can see one uh, pillar of benefits and one of costs. And what you see is just the net benefit of 76 million euros in that case. So um, it was, of course, <laughs> a result we wanted to have, but uh, we didn't know well what the results would be. So the implementation of the climate adaptation measures uh, would be economically beneficial for Bremen in the long run, of course. Uh, it would create 55 uh, full-time jobs and, uh, you know, there will be benefits and income for employees as well. And um, it turned out that um, a lot of Bremen, uh, um, citizens of Bremen, they are uh, very much, um, let's say, uh, very much aware of green space. They like really the green space. We, we had interviews, we had uh, questionnaires about, uh, we did a choice experiment. Um, what would you like to, uh, or let, let's say, what would be the value added for you uh, if we put more trees or more green roofs? And we see very st strong, strong, um, 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 let's say, priority put by the, by the citizens on, on trees, actually. So what we do in the next phase is we try to bring that information to concrete planning processes, which is quite difficult because there you have to, we want to, um, let's say, support planners with economic um, informations about different opportunities they have. Put a little bit more green, put a little bit less green, put some green roofs, something like that. So it's still under development. So I, uh, I have no results on that, but uh, this, is be, this will be one of the, the, the outcome of the, next, uh, of the next phase. So a different uh, area, model area was uh, talking uh, with our companies, actually. We have a harbor in Bremerhaven and uh, I think every fourth um, job is depending more or less on the, uh, on the harbor activities. So it's a very, from the economic side, a very interesting um, and very uh, decisive, uh, let's say, sector for Bremen. So what we did is we talked to companies 
from uh, importing coffee. You know, most of the coffee comes from uh, Brazil, I think, the, the second most from Vietnam and uh, third, I don't remember, maybe Indonesia. Uh, and then we have uh, talked to companies from um, seafood, processing seafood, fruits and vegetables, importing fruits and vegetables. And of course, all the logistic companies and the, the, the harbor companies. Uh, and what we see if you talk if we talk to them um, um, is that the the processing companies importing coffee seafood fruit vegetables uh, they are mainly affected by international climate change impact so if there is a uh, 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 an impact in vietnam for example uh, um, interfering coffee transportation or coffee production in vietnam it will have effects uh, and impact for these companies as well uh, the maritime and logistics, they, they are mainly at the moment uh, locally affected by extreme weather events, what we saw. So we did that in workshops, we had a long participation process with all, we did some, uh, um, uh, let's say we played games in being like in 2050 and uh, extreme weather events is, uh, are, are forcing us to do this or that and uh, this helped a lot. But I must also say that um, getting companies involved is very difficult because they have just other objectives at the moment. And uh, they have, uh, well, let's say they have to make money, they have to run their business and uh, it's a very far away topic for them. So it was always difficult to get uh, companies being interested in that, uh, that area. So we did some uh, workshops shops with them and um, we'll bring now that, that uh, results uh, into the second phase and trying to develop an industri industry specific analyze evaluation tool for the, um, for the sectors. And we try to install a kind of uh, peer learning uh, group and workshops. Um, and hope to, let's say, getting companies more involved in, in our region. Um, and uh, this is quite a very, still a very difficult task, I feel, uh, because they, they're just very much focused on other things. Um, but now I come to this water. I mean, poly open water is a water project also. So I come to two model areas where we dealt with water. What you see here is the... Uh, Bloomdale is an old castle. Let me see. This is an old castle, and this is the the red corner you have here. Is that that corner? Let's say. So this is a, an old castle built in I think 1345 or something like that. So it's quite an old <laughs> quite an old building, and uh, it's located um, um, uh, uh, along the the uh, the side at the Blumenthaler Auer and the Beckedorfer Baker, which are like very small. I mean, even a river, it's like a, a real, it's very small, just uh, in normal times, let's say, this is just a little bit of water in it. You, you sometimes it, you don't even recognize, but if there's heavy rain, then it uh, really uh, uh, fills up here. And you see this is in uh, the, the area which would be flooded if you would have a uh, heavy rain. And uh, the special situation is also that it comes very, um, very soon. So it's only half an hour, something like that, that, it, that all this area is filled and flooded. So, which is of course a bit of uh, dangerous because we have also a kindergarten in that, uh, in that castle. We have some uh, other, um, also small company and uh, some other there are cultural and social events in there. So, uh, and of course, along here, if you see that here's the castle, and then here, of course, there are all residential areas. They are um, at that side, at least, they are also affected by flooding, also, could be affected by flooding. And um, so, we try to uh, set up a participation process. Uh, about what could we do with that in that situation, because it's uh, from the 
uh, water management perspective is uh, not so difficult. Uh, it's quite difficult. You have here, down here, you have the river Vesa. So all that water goes into the river Vesa, but it's pumped into the river Vesa because river Vesa is uh, tidal influenced. So usually water flows down if you have, but if you have a high tide, you have to pump it out. So uh, we have quite huge pumps. Where's my mouse here? quite huge pumps here down here uh, to bring that into the visa also if it's high tide but still if you have to go through that channel uh, and uh, so we discussed with all the stakeholders here people who are living here uh, all the stakeholders using that castle the kindergarten and so on um, the fire workers which they will, would come then and help people getting out of that area, of course. So, and trying to find uh, measures together with them, also to uh, sensitize the, what they themselves could do maybe. So we talked about the maintenance of the water course. We improved that, of course, because it's not only rubbish you have in, in the water course, but of course, it's also, also plants and uh, maybe trees falling down or whatever. So uh, blocking the water. So uh, we improved the, the water course maintenance. Um, we were talking also a lot about the pumping station and control the pumping station. And even now the pumping station is revised actually, or will be revised. So we will have a better pumping station to get the, to pump more water out of that area, let's say. And um, of course we also had a, a, a long discussion about what could the castle do? I mean, how could they protect themselves? And we will have a, uh, we already decided to install an early warning system for all the stakeholders in that area, because in um, half an hour is a very short time, actually. If you know that, uh, if you have heavy rain and in half an hour it's all flooded, it's not enough time for a kindergarten, it's not enough time for elder people and so to get out there. Um, even they might recognize maybe only after 20 minutes and then it's maybe already too late. So we're trying to install a kind of a partnership with all the stakeholders there, uh, informing them, introducing the, the early warning system. Uh, and it turned out that uh, this early warning system we want to uh, install is uh, technically it's not such a problem actually, but the problem is what do we do with the information? I mean, who is uh, who is the um, target group for the information? Who is warned and what would they do then if they are warned? And what happens if they are 10 times warned? Uh, is there a warning and uh, nothing happens? Uh, and then would they, uh, would they the next time, uh, let's say trust in the warning system? So all these uh, different questions we, we already discussed, but we still have to develop a good scheme uh, of, let's say, kind of information change and uh, uh, showing, uh, let's say, bringing the information and the warning to the right persons at the right time. So uh, last model area I want to show you uh, is also um, a water-based or let's say water-focused area. Uh, we are talking about here, uh, so-called Paulina Marsh, this one, this area which you see here, the red, uh, red boundary. This is the River Weser, so we are in, back in, uh, uh, in the, really in the center of Bremen, more or less. This is kind of recreational area. You have here the, uh, you might know the, uh, the Werder Bremen. This is the stadium, the football stadium of Werder Bremen. There are some training, fields of them there's a baseball field there are lots of allotments these allotment gardens these are nursery lots of sports uh, um, buildings for for sport uh, sport clubs and many many people are using that at the weekend uh, that area at the weekend and it's a flooding area actually so if you have a high tide and if there's coming a lot of water from uh, from the from, from the from the mainland, then <clears throat> this is supposed to be flooded. But of course, that's uh, 
uh, on one hand, you have a lot of um, value in that area. So I can show you, oh, this is the same, uh, let's say same area now uh, put with different water levels or let's say with a, the with a height. Um, and so you have a lot of value in that area. You had a lot of people, um, even there are 14, 15 people living in that area. Uh, they have their houses here, um, which is usually not allowed because uh, it's historical, uh, let's say, development. But um, uh, it's usually if you would uh, now create a new um, flooding area, would you would not allow people to live there, of course, because it's too dangerous. Um, the, the dike is here. So this is the city center up there. Uh, and the dike is here, and this is flooded. Here's only a small, like, well, yeah, it's not even a dike, but it's, let's call it dike, but it's much lower. So it definitely will, one day it will be flooded, and then, <clears throat> then uh, you have the water in there, um, and a lot of risk for people, for maybe also they have chemicals in their houses, whatever. Um, you don't know what happened to the buildings. Will they? Uh, will it be destroyed? So we had a uh, also a participation process with all the stakeholders and um, trying uh, try to find some measures um, which improve the situation. Let's say, and um, this is a very was quite a difficult task because it's. Uh, Mm, so much in the city center and so many people are using it and so many different perspectives and stakeholders and interests also in that area they have. Uh, also economic interests like Vera Bremen has all these uh, playing uh, training fields here, uh, uh, invested a lot of money and want to invest more and something like that, you know, and then the, 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 the people having their gardens here and all those. So uh, we started uh, to prioritize, to collect some measures together with them. Uh, what could we do? How can we improve the situation? And um, so we, let's say, uh, start, uh, let's say, collected or prioritized uh, the measures and uh, came, of course, uh, to the point they, they really wanted to have, um, let's say, individual more individual uh, um, um, support and what they could do uh, in their buildings, how can they protect themselves at the buildings, It was very important. Um, how can we then, the next one was, how can we really uh, improve the information and communication structure? Um, again, who is informed if we have a, a, a storm event and, uh, we have the danger that water comes into that area. So what do we do? How, whom do we inform? How, uh, how do we get the people out there? So we discussed all that. And then we, of course, uh, the, the uh, one very important um, aspect was, how do we get the water out if there's water in that area? Um, so how can we improve this, this drainage capacity? Um, uh, at the moment, there's only a small one, let's say, one pipe uh, going out and should drain all the area. And uh, I believe at the moment that it's probably not enough, so we might have to change. But that was, of course, very important for people. I mean, if they say, okay, if we have the water then uh, in there for, let's say, half a day and, it, and it's gone, that's fine. So... Uh, but not for three or four days, then all our belongings are gone and uh, uh, everything is destroyed. Uh, so that was another uh, topic. And uh, we will come up in the, in the next phase then with a stormwater partnership with all the stakeholders there. And we are trying to implement, or let's say we, we, we implement now a feasibility study uh, to optimize the, the drainage. And um, I'm quite sure this will lead to investment then after the project to a really better drainage system. All this process, we, of course, we evaluated with some, uh, this is not, uh, not so important, all this, uh, sorry, in, 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 in German, but um, we had a long discussion of 
what would be the outcome of the of the project and how can we evaluate it um, and um, let's say one have to has to be frank that i mean you won't change the world with that and you won't change the city with that uh, with such a project but um, what we could really measure was that we uh, increased the resilience knowledge people who were uh, who attended the workshops know much better what is resilience what is climate change how can they protect themselves what is helpful uh, what is maybe not helpful um, some of them uh, also um, implemented some action uh, already in their on their buildings for example to protect themselves which is really nice and um, uh, what we also saw is that the networking of the different stakeholders um, let's say improve the resilience of the area was also uh, increased so we are quite happy but these are also of course most of it are also are soft factors but there's uh, like i said before with the, with our working group uh, in the administration um, this is really necessary if you want to change anything or if you want to improve a uh, system this networking and knowledge and uh, also not only knowledge but also knowledge of what to do and what could I do really. Uh, uh, um, this is very, uh, it's even quite a lot, I feel. So if you want to contact, uh, if you want to know more about the project, you can contact either me or the project lead, which is my colleague, Lucia Herbeck. Thanks very much. And probably spoke much longer than 15 or 20 minutes, but uh, excuse for that. <laughs> Thank you very, very much, Christoph. Um, definitely no worries about going over time. I think this was a really well summed up presentation. It touched the topic really nicely. I think there's a lot of identification from our partner cities and the representatives we have here from the project and the cities um, that identify with the challenges that we've seen here, with the measures that could be taken. I think it's very inspirational and also yeah, shows one direction, one way how to address the problem. I think um, really key to point out is this like bringing people from very different backgrounds together, understanding their perspective on the change that is coming. Yeah, and flooding means very different things to the to different people. So different people who live there, people who want to do sports there, people who um, may be decision makers or people who have economic interests in the area. So they all obviously. Um, I'd address differently by this, um, but bring them together, exchanging on that, and I think finding immediate maybe solutions for, for very pressing issues, but at the other side, on the other hand, also exchanging on private action that can be taken. I think this is really, um, yeah, it's a very interesting thing. I see a lot of similarities with how we want to address this topic and this um, yeah, within our project as well. Um, I don't want to yeah talk too much, obviously. I want to give room and 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 time for the group um for all of our participants to ask questions either if you did not understand certain things for information or maybe you just want to make a comment or you see a similarity um everything is very welcome i also would like to highlight we are happy to have questions in your local language because i see we have sufficient of our partners here who could translate so if questions should come in khmer or in bahasa um, feel free to ask them, feel free to use the language you feel most comfortable in. Please, questions out. Maybe for, for those who would like to, to start, I mean, and either you can post the questions in the chat or raise the hand and, and just speak. Uh, but before that, maybe I will start with, uh, with the first question that, that I was having. Um, Thank you, Christoph, for this uh, um, very um, interesting examples and actually compl four completely different um, areas that you are working in. Um, I really enjoyed that uh, that you try to, you know, build a partnership with different stakeholders. Um, my question would be, um, how which tools did you use to try to engage the uh, the different stakeholders uh, i mean I, I i suppose this was the most difficult part of the pro of the first phase as well how to really engage the the civil society actors but also different sectors 
Um, and did you, um, so could you, could you maybe give some examples? Did you, uh, how did you actually reach this different group of stakeholders? So if you are talking maybe about some, some areas, some gardens, did you actually, you know, try to go out to the people and, and knock to their doors or, or did you try to reach maybe first like some organizations working in the neighborhoods? Uh, what, what were the ways that, that you approach and that the whole team approached the, the local stakeholders? That's a very good question. And it's also a very difficult and time consuming uh, activity, actually. <clears throat> um, uh, well, let's say, I would say it was, uh, we tried different ways. Um, um, we tried, I mean, uh, in the, for example, if you look at this Paulina Marsh, which I showed you at the end, uh, uh, which, this recreational area with all these allotment gardens and all this stuff, they are organized in clubs and in kind of associations. So you have a structure where you can uh, contact uh, responsible persons and you can uh, get them involved, talk to them. We very much talked to them also. We walked around and just talked to people uh, in their gardens. <laughs> To inform them about things like that. Um, we always try to find um, organizations or persons uh, who know a lot of people, <laughs> let's say, um, and ask them to support us to, let's say, um, getting them involved. The most difficult um, activity was that with the companies, actually. Um, it was uh, very, very difficult. If you, if you have seen the picture, for example, in that area where you, you have that castle, the Borg Blumendal, uh, at the workshops, there were a lot of um, elder people actually in the workshops. We did not reach any young people in that area. I mean, one uh, fact was that they are not living so much younger people, but so many young people, but uh, still, all of them, they were like more 60 plus, uh, so most of them. Um, so they were engaged, they had the time to come. They are engaged also in, in that area, but um, so very difficult to give, um, let's say blueprint, I must say, it was very, we just talked and talked and talked and asked and asked uh, many people um, trying to use every contact we have, let's say from the political side, from administrative side, from private side sometimes also. Um, and this helped actually at the end, but um, yeah, it was very time consuming actually. Mm -hmm. Put a lot of effort in that. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I can, I can imagine that uh, finding strong uh, partners that are actually connected to the sites is, is very important first step to actually be able to really approach uh, the, the inhabitants, the residents, the different stakeholders on different levels. Um, yes. Right. I just like to read out one question that came from the chat from um, Sana Sarai. Uh, thank you for your question. So do this negations or you mean negotiations? I'm not exactly sure. Negotiations? Yeah, okay. Um, so the discussions, negotiations, did they de decrease the land value in the sites where we have where you were facing flooding of danger of flooding? So were this awareness raising on there will be a risk or there is a current risk? Did this rather decrease it? Or maybe it could even be the opposite that they saw somebody is working about it, uh, doing something about it. So now um, the the value, the economic value of the area could increase as well. I don't know what which side did it go to. Mm -hmm. Also, very good question. Um, but I must say, I don't really know. Um, but we had that discussion as well, um, and we even had this that discussion a couple of years ago uh, when we published our storm uh, stormwater maps where you can see all the flooding areas in, in the city. So overall the city. Uh, um, and we had a very long discussion about are we, should we, let's say, publish that maps or not? Um, and we did it. And from my perspective, nothing happens. <laughs> I mean, the, the effects of, uh, on the market 
are maybe there, but I don't see, I mean, there are so many other effects from the market uh, or impacts into the market or how you call it, that the, the effect is probably not that strong. And uh, uh, in that specific area where we have been in uh, around the castle, there also like this uh, residential area was affected. Um, I mean, in fact, we must say that it, it was already known actually that there's a flooding problem, let's say. Um, so it could have probably more a positive effect on, you know, there's something, we will do something about it. Um, but in general, we have no figures. We don't know anything about it. It's just a, a guess from my side. So well, thanks for that. <laughs> Thank you very much for the answer now. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I can imagine it's difficult. Um, often addressing the problem at least um, seems that somebody is ever willing to to take a solution or to find a solution so that mm. might, might also be attractive to investors that they because the problem is often known as you said right so the people who are living around that they have experienced that um but yeah thanks for your um opinion on this um we have a question from the sanitation directorate of the public works um Silahalahi. um please Hello, you you raised your hand or no question? Maybe it's muted. I can't hear. I think there must be some problems with microphone. Um, we still can't hear you, but if that doesn't work, maybe uh, you can post your question in the chat then. Hello. Can yes. Yes. yes, please. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I have to no problem. My college <laughs> computer. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you. Uh, nice presentation, uh, Mr. Christoph. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, maybe uh, I want to comment the, for the first uh, topic about the economic uh, benefit and cost. Uh, my, my suggestion maybe, uh, you, you, you say that uh, there's a beneficial in 2050 if we uh, following this kind of uh, research thing. And then, but uh, you haven't mentioned uh, actually what's, what's the impact if we, uh, stay same or we are not uh, change anything or we just uh, in steady in steady condition uh, actually what's what's the what the impact so I think we need to compare uh, before and after we following the research that's the first uh, question and the second one uh, uh, because I'm from the sanitation aspect, maybe I will concern to that uh, aspect. As we know that uh, uh, global warming uh, has uh, has a close uh, connection with the climate change itself. So uh, related to your uh, first uh, research, you mentioned about the uh, economic of overall. Uh, but uh, uh, but uh, I didn't see that. Uh, do you mean that uh, economic uh, calculating, uh, including the pollution that uh, that uh, okay. pollution that uh, the that. Uh, disebabkan <laughs> yeah that's that cause that cause also by uh, uh, solid waste or uh, wastewater or uh, vehicle pollution or anything else that we we know that as the the biggest contributor in the pollution itself uh, I can get uh, the point when you mentioned 
the research number three, number four, because it's really uh, specific to uh, uh, to dike and uh, and also to uh, flood. But for the first research, maybe I need uh, some more explanation. Uh, either it's including the 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 uh, several contributors of the biggest uh, po pollu pollution. Maybe that's uh, that's uh, my question at this uh, virtual meeting. Thank you. Mr. Thank Christoph. you so much. Thank you, Anna. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank yeah. you, David. Yeah. Terima kasih. Um, I think on. you relate a lot to the first, like the calculation that with the two uh, graphs that we saw with economic loss, or not economic loss, but cost and benefit, right? I think this first, um, and and you, your first question is about, did this calculation already includes the cost if we don't do anything? So the cost of climate change impacts, um, if if we don't take any preventions, any measures to 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 address that, I think that was your first question, yeah. And the second question, I understand you, the economic loss or the financial loss in the calculations, do they include like aspects of pollution through solid waste or wastewater? I think in the Bremen case, this is really the loss from climate change um, impacts. So not what causes climate change, maybe. Oh, well, it doesn't really cause climate change, but not like other pollution um, contributors, but really only climate change related impacts. But I leave it to Chris, Christoph to answer the question, of course. Yeah, thanks very much. Also very, uh, very good questions, actually. Um, the first part of it, um, what did we calculate? Um, um, to be frank, we didn't calculate that, what, uh, what you mentioned, and uh, we should have done that probably, but uh, we had, a, had another focus. Uh, our focus was um, more on the, let's say, practical side of you, um, um, point of view. Um, if you um, have in the political discussion in our city, you talk about trees or greening roofs or something like that, it's, there's always uh, only the discussion about this costs so much and it costs so much and we don't have the money and we have to spend the money some, somewhere else or something like that. So we wanted to, uh, let's say, um, uh, enrich that uh, discussion a bit with the benefit side, uh, uh, side of it. So to show also that it costs something to plant trees, um, but uh, the society uh, have a benefit of it. But what we didn't do and would, would be, let's say, uh, from the scientific point of view, of course, accurate also to, uh, to calculate what would happen if we would not do it. But the, that uh, side of uh, the calculation we didn't do. We just uh, compared the state situation and then we compared what would it cost to plant two trees more uh, in 100 meters streets, something like that. And then we would then be calculated uh, the different positive effects. Uh, positive effects would be CO2 reduction. Positive effect would be um, reduction of dust in the city also. Um, we did not include health uh, issues because uh, lack of data we had. We will do that in, at next time. And one very important thing was we um, we had, uh, I said, a kind of choice experiment where we asked uh, a representative uh, um, a group of people in Bremen, like I think 1,500 or so. Um, they had, uh, let's say, they gave us their uh, willingness to pay, let's say, through a, a certain experiment we did with them. Uh, so they could uh, choose, well, I'm willing to pay five euros if you if you plant two more trees or 50 euros or zero euros or I won't give anything or something like that. So we get, um, 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 let's say, I, um, an idea of the value, what would they see for the, I mean, the city is more attractive than afterwards as well. Um, and uh, how would they, who would, would the citizens, um, uh, let's say, prefer that 
uh, ideas and we see they were very much in favor of, of trees and not so much of green roofs, of course, because green roofs you can't see. I mean, they help all of us, but they you can't see. Um, and uh, um, so, but uh, uh, your question, I just, uh, let's say, no, we didn't do. <laughs> so maybe we should consider that in the next phase. Thanks for that. Um, I forgot the second part of the question. The second question was more about in the general calculation of mm -hmm. um, climate change impacts and the like the, the negative financial implications. Mm -hmm. Do they also include maybe um, insufficient wastewater treatment or insufficient solid waste management, something mm -hmm. like this? Mm -hmm. So that's often a question here, of course, when we say we, I don't know, like a, 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 a certain residential area that is not served in a good way with public service, with waste mm -hmm. or wastewater yeah. management, um, that it's hard to say it's not only something need to be spent because we don't i mean we don't really include in the calculation what is the health cost the environmental cost the infrastructure cost if we don't provide that service right because the status quo is maybe it's already bad the people don't know that it can be different but mm. if the calculation does not include the negative financial effects on the residents or on the in, on the environment um i'm not sure if that plays a role in this discussion in bremen mm. Uh, not so much, but of course we we calculated also the, for example, quantity of water uh, of rainwater, uh, which we could, um, let's say, save. Let's say which we could uh, uh, through permeable or or green roofs we could keep out of the of of the the the, the drainage system. Uh, and then, of course, it has an effect on the drainage system itself and the wastewater treatment afterwards, because you uh, you don't have an overflow in 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 the river Weser, for example, or you reduce the overflow, let's say. Um, so, but uh, in that sense, uh, it's only uh, it's only touched that issue actually. So, uh, because the the sanitation is already there in all areas and is uh, it has to be there by law let's say uh, and we're paying for that uh, we all pay for that so um so sanitation is quite quite uh, well let's say installed actually all over bremen thank you very much yeah i think that's definitely but i i very much welcome the comment also i think that's something here as that's why we say we don't only work on climate change of course the poly urban water project tries to include climate change aspects in the in the planning and in the in the discussion but we focus very much on yeah the public service or sanitation service provision and what are positive and negative effects if we have it or if we don't have it and what are the standards that we try to to promote through this yeah but i think the discussion on the financial loss loss is really important for in sufficient services so or, or like low quality services that's really important to have so thank you so much again for the question um i look around i don't see another raised hand somebody would like to ask a question the floor is still open we are at 4 p.m now so i would welcome one last question if that's okay and then we would unfortunately have to go to the closing again um, Paalvan from Direktorat Sanitasi also. Silakan. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for the uh, presentation, Mr. Uh, I would like to ask a question. Uh, if we uh, compare between uh, the city of Bremen which, with uh, Indonesian cities such as Jakarta, which has a different uh, climate type, uh, I believe that uh, in Indonesia we have a tropical monsoon, and I think in Bremen we have some kind of oceanic climate, if I'm not uh, wrong. Uh, do the action to the uh, city resilience uh, climate are still quite the same, or maybe you have uh, another suggestion if we uh, practice the uh, resilient uh, climate in uh, Indonesia? Thank you. Thank you very much, Christoph. 
Very clear questions, right over yeah, to you. Also very good question, actually. Um, um, my answer would be, it depends, I think. <laughs> uh, I mean, of course, the question, uh, the, the climate is completely different and you have uh, other rainfalls and all this. I mean, it's not comparable, probably. Um, I just can tell you from Bremen, uh, if you look, for example, at stormwater management, I mean, these heavy rainfalls, um, we actually do, let's say, measures for climate adaptation without considering the climate, actually, because we don't know. I mean, we don't know how uh, how much uh, how often the the heavy rains will come, uh, how much water they will bring. We just know where we have uh, hotspots in the area where we, are, we have uh, potentially flooded areas in the city, and if we have that areas now we will have even more in 20 30 years probably um, but we don't really calculate it like okay we will uh, we will expect don't know uh, heavy rainfalls with so much more water uh, in the next years but we just uh, come from the let's say from the uh, from the um, from all weak spots already we have you know like if you have the weak spot now, you will have it in 20, 30 years, it will be even worse. Yeah. Uh, if you look at sea level rise, we, we really um, uh, look at the, uh, at the predictions which come from the IPCC, for example. So there we really talk about uh, what would we expect on climate change on sea level rise, for example. If, you, if we talk about stormwater, we, we, we don't really know. We just know it will be more and will be more often. Um, and of course, with with uh, heat, um, um, we don't uh, we are not considered be, to be uh, with uh, let's say a very very hot city. Of course, we are the northern part of Germany, uh, but still, I mean, there are people, there are elder people, there are children, there are vulnerable people, there are uh, people with uh, allergic reactions and all this. So there are still a lot of vulnerable people which are uh, affected by heat. So, uh, but that is for us, for example, a very difficult topic to communicate because very often people say, oh, the last 10 years, at least they said, well, okay, it's not, you know, can be a little bit hotter, no problem. But the last two years showed that uh, the heat island effect and all this will be uh, much more, uh, or will affect much more actually than, than people thought in the last years. So, but uh, I think it's probably not at all comparable with Indonesia. I, I would say you have to look at this completely different. And the most important thing, thing is I, from my perspective is uh, look at your own infrastructure, what you have and how can you improve it? And then uh, think of, your, the, the climate impacts you will have in the next 20, 30 years, and then you're on the right track, let's say. Um, so so I'm, I always try to get things done, or let's say implement it and don't talk about, too much ab about what we expect in 50 years. So, yeah. But that's only my personal experience. So. Thank you very much. Um... Yeah, I think although obviously climates are extremely different, um, especially this summer showed us um, that yeah, this extreme weather, we don't have the monsoon season, of course, in Germany, but we do have extreme rains. We have we are facing more and more problems that, that we that we are maybe more used to already in the in it's more in the tropical areas. Um, also, the heat topic is maybe yeah, not as tense for the urban areas but i think when i remember the last two years like they were especially on the from the agricultural perspective like in in the more in the rural areas then there were very big problems with long jaws and with um um yeah uh, leakage, leakage um, i mean a lack of water and water availability um over the summers um and then also of course have strong economic impacts on the agricultural production um so there are there are different, yeah, people, things are still very different, but I think um, we are facing problems at the similar time now and, and, and they, they are not, they were not spared in Germany from the effects as well. And of course, rising sea levels in the northern part of Germany is a very, it's a very um, 
difficult topic as well and has is to be addressed as well. Um, now I think this perspective was very much from the city, from the from the urban place in Bremen, um, and how local measures could be taken. Um, I think again, of course, take action is a great is a great last statement, but I think the discussion and involving local people, involving everybody, all actors, everybody who's involved, raising the awareness is really still key. To, to raise acceptance also, yeah, and to raise acceptance of public spendings. Why do we have to spend so much money of these things? As long as people understand, it's always taxpayers' money. So um, people need to have an awareness about that to then be able to, yeah, to to uh, to, to find that appropriate and to and to be to be somehow willing to contribute in a way. And I think um, that was, yeah, very nice brought out today. But eventually, action has to follow, of course, um, and it cannot stop at the discussion um if it is okay for everybody if nobody has a last urgent statement to make or a comment then i would take the liberty to close today's session i see some people nodding i hope that is okay i would like to say my Anya, there, is you have one, a... there is one last question i think yeah. Uh... oh yeah yeah last question okay we we allow start... that last question certainly please <laughs> Yeah, thank you, thank you, Mr. David. Uh, Mr. Christoph, uh, related to your first uh, research, uh, I'm, I'm just curious, uh, actually, what's the consideration until you choose a natural option like uh, planting and tree as a, as a solution for, for Bremen? I mean, in the, in the early research, is there any option that you consider uh, uh, like maybe based on technology uh, until finally uh, your team maybe choose uh, this option as the best one. Thank you. Okay, I, ha I had problems to understand the question actually because the sound was very uh, bad. Maybe somebody who got the Yeah, question, I can David? quickly, yeah. yeah, I think the question was looking at so we we see the solutions that you presented green roofs um planting trees and permeable pavements or permeable surfaces um was this like a final result as instruments or solutions or was and and have there been maybe more like technology driven solutions also being considered so this sounds more like let's call them natural solutions or nature-based solutions. And then on the other hand, were there more like high-tech solutions or I don't know, technology-driven solutions on the table? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, something like an early warning system is still a high-tech solution for us actually. Um, so, um, but um, this, uh, three topics I showed with the, the, with the green roofs and the, and the trees <clears throat> came out of the strategy. I mean, they are a measure, uh, a formulated and, and accepted measure in our adaptation strategy. So um, the, the, let's say, more high-tech or technological uh, measures were not discussed in general, but of course we, for example, we will change our uh, how to plant the trees. They will get more space in the root. We, we consider also technical, um, um, let's say, uh, how can we improve the watering, for example, all this technical, they will, this question will come along to improve it, uh, but it's, it's more on that general, uh, let's say, general uh, level of what do we need? I mean, we, trees will improve our city climate, let's say. Yeah, now, now how we will come to that uh, and what is the benefit and the cost of it. Uh, and we saw also that at the beginning of the, of the project, it was uh, said that uh, one tree would cost about uh, 800 euros yeah, to, to plant and uh, uh, to maintain the first years. Uh, now, uh, we are discussing about other possibilities to plant with new technology also in the ground. And now we are with 3,000 uh, or 4,000 even for a tree. So uh, it changes all time actually, but it's more a different level we, we, we discuss. Yeah, there are some ideas, but there's no real, um, let's say, 
high-tech solution we were talking about. Um, it's more basic. Maybe we come to that on a later stage, but we didn't have that discussion at, uh, so far in the last years. Thank you very much. Um, I like to just pick up one thing that you said in the beginning, and I think that is really key to our project also. Um, we try to find solutions, um, and you said that have let's we call them co-benefits yeah so if you say let's say we want to reduce flooding in a certain area and one option is to increase the absorb absorption capacity of the of the surface of the ceiling so it can infiltrate better um and we do that in a green way let's say um through like permeable pavements or something on the alternative would be to increase the sewer capacity yeah so if we have the green pavement, we have we make the city more attractive. So that has two benefits, or may at least two benefits, maybe more benefits. Yeah, at the same time. Um, or if you have a green roof, it can maybe absorb rain and at heavy rainfall, but it can also reduce CO two um, through um, um, yeah through through whatever. I'm sorry, I forgot. But um, <laughs> anyways, um, so we have different different benefits at the same time. It could maybe also reduce the temperature um, when you have the trees, but it also can help to infiltrate and absorb water at the same time. So there are various benefits depending on who would you ask. Um, well while you have maybe an expensive more high technology solution or infrastructure solution it actually only serves that one benefit to say i can channel more water now out of the city at this time but it doesn't make the city more pretty it might cost more money it might have a construction site for one or two years in the in the public areas um, where people would yeah would be would, then you have traffic etc so there are we look really more at the holistic part and say how can we make the city more livable and um, have that as a benefit and at the same time tackling climate change um, adaptation solutions you know so um, but I think it's a really important question and this will always rise up again thank you very much thanks to all of you many thanks to our participants from yeah almost all over the world nowadays and um, especially from the directorate in sanitation and public works in indonesia and also from the provincial government in Krachi. thank you bernd our project manager to take part today and to update the process um, the project thank you anya for moderating together with me and of course thank you christoph for your great presentation and um, for the time you took and i wish you all a very nice afternoon in Indonesia and Southeast Asia, and a very nice day and morning still in Germany. Akunjurang, terima kasih, and thank you. Goodbye. See you next time. Thank, thank you, you very much. much.